Hey, what's up guys? Sean of Steel back with another video for you guys. And since I just did the Thousand Pound Sisters video yesterday, I was searching around and I found this by this guy, Sunny V2. I absolutely freaking love Sunny. All his documentaries are like so damn good. And if you guys haven't seen him, I highly recommend checking out his channel. He's got like millions of subs, but he makes really awesome videos. And he has a video about Thousand Pound Sisters which I wouldn't have expected because I don't think that's like up his alley. He does like shocking stuff. But I had no idea that these sisters who faked their funeral for money, like apparently, I'm guessing it was Tammy because she's the bigger, but apparently they faked a funeral. Like she was, they pretended she was dead to like milk money out of the followers and subs that they had, which is friggin' ridiculous ridiculous but we're gonna check that one out yesterday tammy went into the hospital she has pneumonia and she can't breathe i set up a gofundme account if y'all can donate a penny nickel dime oh hope is so happy when amy and Tam now I, I don't have anything against people that set up like gofundmes for legit reasons if you need help with something people are very generous they tend to want to help you but if you're just straight up throwing this out there, she has pneumonia. Like, I had pneumonia when I was 600 pounds. It didn't knock me out. I didn't even go to the damn hospital or the friggin' doctor. I just sat there and soldiered it out. But I'm also a psychopath. So I pro there, there's been at least a dozen times I should have died. And I should have been in the hospital that I just didn't go. But I'm a special kind of stupid. But anyways... Pneumonia, GoFundMe, come on. Tammy Slayton first began their YouTube journey back in 2014. They were seen by their audience as two wholesome sisters who were bravely putting themselves out into the world despite their unconventional appearances. Yeah. However, only a few short years later, that very same audience had grown to hate and despise them. The I didn't know people really hated them. I thought people genuinely liked them from their show because it gets a lot of people watching it. But people are quick to turn on you. Especially when you do something like that where you're being like highly manipulative and trying to milk money out of people that support you. That's just not the way to go, to go about it. That's why I'm not sitting here shouting out my cash app or anything like that. I don't want anybody's money. I just appreciate people liking my video. The Slayton sisters would turn their entire audience against them through controversy after controversy, peaking with one of the most ambitious scandals in YouTube history, a GoFundMe for Tammy Slayton's funeral, who... Boy, isn't that just a crazy shot of her? I can't even do that with my... Ch oh, look at that. My face got skinny enough. I can't do that. Hell yeah, I'll take that. ...who hadn't even died. However, if the audience had simply known more about these two sisters prior to the beginning of their channel, each of these controversies could have been easily predicted. For example, back in 2010, Amy would be arrested after shoplifting an $8 book from Walmart, showing... Ooh, for an $8 book? Come on, at least knock off a friggin' Borders or something. Walmart, and they caught you for an $8 book? You're just a shitty criminal at that point. That even prior to beginning YouTube, the sisters were prone to both yeah, cutting corners and cheating time. the system. Most of this information would only become public at a later date. So when they first began their channel, they were liked. The sisters built an audience through their strong family bond, positive attitude, and ability to laugh at their own shortcomings. Please yeah, I think, like, self-deprecating humor is super funny. So when you guys see me, like, make fun of people in my 600-pound life, I'm genuinely making fun of myself. Like, I'm joking about me because I know that I was once there. I'm not trying to be nasty. Some people think I am, and whatever. My only thing to you is lighten up. Like, life is not that serious. And if you take it that serious, you'll never get out alive. We need to lose weight to be... Oh. We don't care if you don't like us, we're fat and we love it. They weren't exactly the sharpest tools in the shed, but people appreciated their <laughs> authenticity. I want to say, hey, I'm fat, I'm fat. Well, I thought that was Tammy, that's Amy? Whoa. So Amy must have lost some weight before she started the show. Because her fupa is fupaing right now and that thing is poking. Good lord. But don't you call me fat. Why would I want you to call me fat? If we're trying to be in a relationship, come on now, use your brains. And the fact that they were kind of doing YouTube for themselves, it didn't seem like they were trying to impress anyone. Love when a girl isn't afraid to be herself. I applaud you. Me too. I genuinely like when people are just themselves and they're not like trying to put on any kind of persona. That's why I just keep it as real as I can. 
I'm not trying to be anybody I'm not. I'm genuinely being me and hopefully you guys like that. Finally, a real person doing a review. Love it. Keep them coming. True. I love her so much. She always has such a positive, fun, relaxing vibe. The Slayton sisters would receive their first big break after posting a video titled Chubby Bunny Challenge, which would go on to gain a view count in the millions. However, when examining the video's thumbnail and dislike- Ooh, that's a lot. Do you guys remember the Chubby Bunny Challenge? Should I do that for you guys? You guys want to see me jam some marshmallows in my mouth and choke? Ratio. It was pretty obvious that it had gone viral as a result of people watching to laugh at their physical appearances. Which is that? It's the... <laughs> <laughs> I salute this channel for not disabling comments, that takes bravery. I genuinely didn't know it was possible for the human body to lay adipose tissue on the forehead. That's true, I, I don't know how Tammy ended up with like a bubble on her forehead, but it's amazing where the body will put fat, and I don't disable any comments. I click allow all comments, so if you want to go on there and say you hate my face, go ahead and do it, it's not going to bother me. I'll probably like it. Head. Anytime I wake up and think I don't really feel like working out today, I just think of this video and it gives me the motivation I need. That's true. It was a similar story with videos like Bake With Me and Trying New Makeup. Whoa, look at Amy. She's out here trying to start her OnlyFans. Get it, girl. Shit. Thumbnails were sufficiently horrid and laughable to make the videos go viral. However, despite the hate, the hundreds of thousands of views across the videos still brought in others who appreciated the relaxed nature of the channel, growing their fan base further. Oh, that you're so too. cute. Well done on your makeup and ignore all the negative comments. She is so sweet. I would let her put makeup on me any day. All the beauty gurus be like, you got to do it exactly like this, Kay. And this girl is like, it's your makeup. You choose how to do it. And she did pretty. I mean, I'm a guy. I'm not going to pretend I know anything about makeup besides, hey, sisters. That's the only thing I know about makeup. You're good. I'm going to sub. However, while a growing fan base would generally be seen as a positive for most YouTube channels, for the Slayton sisters, it would end up becoming a negative as it'd be at around the same time that they begin to reach out to their audience for help in relation to their lack of financial security. For example, after achieving a thousand subscribers on their channel, the Slayton sisters- Bro, a thousand subs and you're asking for a MacBook Pro? I just hit like 6,000. What do you guys think I could get? A new friggin' Kia or something? Y'all wanna buy me a car? <laughs> could set up their first GoFundMe, requesting that their audience help them buy an Apple MacBook with the goal of increasing the quality of their videos. Now, most of their audience felt as though there was nothing wrong with this proposal. The audience sends a bit of money I mean, through, the MacBook sisters get Pro a new laptop, a and in return, the audience gets a higher average video quality, which is seemingly a win-win for both parties. I mean, my quality sucked before. I think I've put like $1,100 into trying to make my videos better because I didn't even have a friggin' laptop when I started doing this, so. However, uh, on the contrary, some of her viewers felt as though the Slayton sisters were abusing their power as YouTubers in comments such as, delete this, I see you that. are going to lose all your subscribers. You're a pathetic lowlife that needs to get off your ass Whoa, and get a damn Ruby. job like the rest of us instead of mooching off of us. You are disgusting. And if I were you, thank God I am not. I couldn't wake up in the morning. Well, at 600 pounds, you're risking not waking up anyway, but Ruby, coming in a little spicy, sister. Damn! As a response to the hate, Amy would shift the blame from herself, stating that her friend was the one who suggested that she make the oh. GoFundMe. I do not take money very lightly. Yeah, the whole do. MacBook thing was not my idea. It was a friend of mine's idea. I didn't even edit the video or anything. But that video is down. However, while Amy... Isn't that almost worse if you're like, it won my idea, somebody gave me that idea, and I just said, woo, buddy. Did receive a bit of hate. The operation will prove to be successful after raising over $833, hey. showing the Slayton sisters that it was not only possible, but simple to extract money from their audience That's through money GoFundMe, in the bank. which would become a vital piece of information for Kentucky. the main scandal to be covered in this. Kentucky's also where we watched that video about that chick whose mom was like helping her film OnlyFans content. So Kentucky, y'all be going crazy with everything, all the all this content, and then talk, your Kentucky Fried Chicken is bussin' bussin'. Video. The other problem that the Slayton sisters encountered after growing an audience was that they could now be held accountable for the stories that they shared throughout their videos. For example, Amy would upload a video talking about a situation in which she had Puppy. adopted a German Shepherd rescue dog before leaving it in a camper van on a hot summer's day. Now, Amy really? would state that- I hate people that do stuff like that. Why adopt the dog if you don't have a place for them? You're just going to lock him in a camper van? Like, I, the only way I could see you taking the dog is if that dog was going to be put down, if it wasn't taken that day. Besides that, let somebody that it will actually take care of the dog take them. And I know we have a huge issue with like overpopulation and pets not having homes. That's why I'm kind of against people getting puppies. Instead, they should go adopt a dog that's already like needing a home, but... 
some people just don't see it that way. The air conditioning was on whilst the dog was inside and that the camper van was quote freezing. The camper has AC in it and we only put him in there for like 30 minutes and who are y'all to judge me? However, when Amy would then reveal that the dog had gone crazy inside and smashed the air conditioning unit just to get out. Oh no, that dog went Cujo mode just to get out of there? There's no way he was in there 30 minutes. If he is ripping shit apart to get out of there, either the dog's friggin' mentally unstable or he's hot as hell trying to break free. That's so sad. Her audience assumed that maybe the AC wasn't on and that the dog was going crazy because it had been overheating inside. This theory would be supported further after Amy revealed that the dog had bitten her quite severely after escaping from the camper van, leading her audience to believe that the dog was all riled up after overheating. Oh, and she's smoking. I was a smoker until about six months ago. I was on them Newport 100s, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> anyways, she friggin' locked him up. Of course, the dog went crazy wanting out of there. He was hot as hell, or maybe he had some kind of separation anxiety. Something else was up here. As a result of the incident, Amy would state that the dog had been put in a 14-day quarantine. The dog is in 14-day quarantine. He, ha he has a week to go. However, with the bite mark being so severe and Amy taking the dog to the pound, whilst using the wording that the dog was no longer with her, the audience assumed oh, that Amy had taken the dog no. to the pound. Oh, you put the dog down? He was out of his damn mind. You put him in a hot box and then he gets out and he bites you. He doesn't want to go back in there, lady. And I guarantee you would probably try to jam his ass back in there because you're not taking him for walks at your size. You're not getting the exercise. And German Shepherds are a breed that needs a crazy amount of activity. That dog is going to need to run, play. Like, you're going to have to let that dog get a couple miles a day for them to tire out and be kind of sane. German Shepherds are, can be a crazy breed if you don't do it right to have it put down, resulting in the popular opinion that Amy was an animal abuser. I can't I imagine this woman owning a German Shepherd. Shepherds need tons That's of activity saying, both physically yeah. and mentally. She couldn't even take care of herself, let alone such a strong and intelligent breed. I'm sorry, but I highly doubt she ran after the German Shepherd. You know <laughs> she ran after them. I totally missed that. Yeah, she's not running no marathons or chasing down no friggin' German Shepherd for sure. You need to be relatively active to own a dog like a German Shepherd, and you need to be trained to be able to take care of an abused large dog. Dog. The sentiment would become that. even worse when, at a later date, Tammy would upload a video talking about the celebration of her birthday at a really? gaming arcade, mentioning in passing that she felt sorry for their other dog, Little Bit, who had been left in the hot car whilst they were inside no. playing games. I feel bad for Little Bit because she sat outside in a hot car while we were having fun. But what is it with you guys and putting dogs in hot vehicles? Like, something's freaking wrong with you guys. I'm thinking you're not quite operating at full capacity up here. Something's wrong with your ass. Or maybe that fat on your forehead's gone to your brain or something that's choking it out. But, dude, really? Do like, I can make fun of her all I want if she's trying to kill dogs every time she gets one. And Little Bit's still on the show, so thank God he survived. But I did, while we were at uh, getting something to eat, I did get a, a little bit some uh, ice water. So I thought about it, at least. Oh I mean, God. so I was going to get her some water. What a selfish, disgusting bunch of people these three are. Poor, Honestly. poor little dog. I'm surprised a little bit is still alive. These events did a pretty good job of destroying the Slayton sisters' reputation. However, as you might assume, it was only going to get worse from there on out. As Bro, take their freaking dogs from them. They do not need dogs. Like, I know Amy was losing some weight, and I think Tammy's even losing weight now, even though I don't think the show's caught up with that. But they really don't need animals the way they're treating them. That's crazy. Amy would find herself in yet another controversy after going on what a date now? with a 19 year old autistic kid at a local McDonald's. Y'all know that I had the worst night ever Friday and it was a horrible night. It started off good. We met each other. Well, it wasn't the first time we met. Don't. Bro, he's 19 years old autistic so like i doubt this was probably like his first date i hope this doesn't get worse than this like something happened in the bathroom or something and they went to pound town played stinky twinky whatever the hell y'all want to call it did something strange for a piece of change fuck for a buck however you want to put it get in between for some green like something might happen 
think that. I'm not that type of person. As mentioned, in the beginning, the date seemed to have been going well, to the extent that Amy and her date decided to book a hotel so oh, they could go and get no. frisky together, at which point things would start to head in a negative direction. And then we went to a hotel room. And I finally got up and I started loving on him. I was trying to give him a hickey because he was a virgin and he never had a hickey before. Oh no, you just took... Oh, he's a virgin. So, hasn't had any since it had him. But... Oh my god. And then you're sucking on his neck? Like, lady, be you need to be careful here. I'm not saying you shouldn't date someone who's autistic or something like that. But pushing the pace is probably a big freaking no-no. If you're gonna date someone with special needs like that, don't try to force anything. Like, this is full-on creepy. Like, this is dude driving around the, like, little kitty parks in the van creepy. So I was giving him a hickey, and he was like, quit biting me. And I'm like, I'm not biting you. And <laughs> he was like, yeah, you are. So I bit him. I have to Stop. When you're so overweight that he thinks you're trying to eat him. <laughs> That's hilarious. Biting her date and assumably scaring him off during the intimate moment, he would take to Facebook, posting a status written in an ancient hillbilly dialect, which will receive a response from Amy about the size of his penis. Following oh, this- what is it with you women and insulting our- like, right away. If we do something to you, it's, hee hee hee, you got a little hee hee. That's like your first thing any of you say to us to get even with us, and you know that that just- straight dagger to the soul of any man if you tell him that for the rest of his life he is probably gonna think well is it is it nah big <laughs> stop and he would go on to upload her video discussing the night where she would completely stop dox the guy in the comment section with his facebook page and telephone number after which he would be harassed by amy's youtube audience no. in somewhat of a hilarious act of karma amy would then go on to get into another relationship with you really doxed a 19 year old autistic kid you like i thought that they were just lovable sisters but the more we see this video the worse it's getting and the lower and lower my opinion of them is going I, i'm not liking this at all like they have showed so much scummy behavior in their past it's hard to believe that they've changed at this point which would ultimately end in separation after amy's youtube audience decided to get involved oh no guys we're happy <laughs> David oh just broke God. up with me because everybody was harassing him. Now y'all see why I don't tell people who I'm updating. Well, yeah, I mean, keeping it private is the safest thing you could have done. But people were definitely going to troll you because I'm sure you get a lot of hate watchers and stuff, but... Because y'all bully and harassing and then he does. And while this would mark the end of Amy and Tammy's reputational base scandals, it would ironically mark the beginning of what would be many financial controversies, beginning when their audience discovered that the sisters had been receiving government assistance in a video oh, titled no. Amy's Toxoplasmosis. Amy would explain that as a result of being legally blind, she had been receiving social When you post a video because you're like, I'm on disability because I'm legally blind, and it's the first time I've ever seen you in glasses... This is freaking hilarious. She's like, all right, I got to put these on for the video. And then, yeah, this, she's not, I don't know how Legally Blind works or whatever. I'm 2020, baby. I'm locked in. But, yeah, no, this is the first time I've ever seen her in glasses. Security payments. I'm not on disability for my weight. I'm on disability because of my eyesight. It would then be revealed later that Tammy was also receiving disability payments for her morbid obesity, which would result in backlash from her audience, but stating that they were rotting the system by receiving money from both the government and their job as YouTubers. In I mean, I probably would definitely label Tammy as disabled, like, but Amy, she, she could get out and do something. Like, at my heaviest, like, there's no way I was getting out and doing it. And I got a bad back. I've got three bulging discs and a herniated disc in my back, so... In addition to receiving money from these two sources, they also began to make money from selling merch, before many would claim that this was also a scam. The merch site was suspicious from the very beginning and read as follows. If you purchase Tammy's merch, you'll be added to a private group chat with Tammy. To purchase, head over to the donate section and donate the appropriate amount, $35 for t-shirts, $50 for hoodies, then head to the contact section and email us with the email you use to make the purchase. The reason that the Slayton sisters requested for purchases to donate the appropriate amount became why is it so shady? 
Oh, I see. Oh and my pretty God. obvious. They're definitely scamming the tax system and sliding money to Tammy so she can stay on disability from what it seems. I support a good side hustle, but this one is super shady. What the hell kind of sketchy ass website is this? I just donate my money and hope to God I get something in return. No tracking or proof of purchase. Refunds, yeah, no thank you. Wild. This feels like a way to scam the IRS somehow. I didn't sell anything. People donated. Yeah, don't... I don't know why people would even support this or entertain this because this is just crazy. They're definitely trying to be as shady as possible, but you knew that from the jump because they're asking for a freaking MacBook Pro when they hit a 1,000 subscribers. Like, that's crazy. What do you expect? Like, each one of them to give you 100 bucks or something that donates? Like, that's crazy. It's just, no, no, lady... No. It got worse when fans would come to realize that the sisters hadn't been paying the artists who had completed the designs for the merch. A representative for oh, Tammy would take shit. to Instagram stating, all people who make artwork don't ask to get paid, but to simply get a follow or notice by Tammy. Most of the artwork on the website right now was designed by at blank, our website designer and at blank again. Yeah, forget that. Y'all need paid for your work. If you're doing something like that, artistic, and giving you know them this artwork, like you deserve to be paid. I don't care if a like, whatever. I'll follow you back for friggin' nothing. I don't care. But yeah, they at least pay them for their artwork. End. However, apparently this wasn't the arrangement made with the artists. In an article written about the scam by Showbiz Cheat Sheet, it was mentioned that at least one artist has claimed they requested their art not be used without payment and have since been blocked and have had their artwork misattributed to someone else. Oh this artist would take God. to Instagram in a post reading, I wasn't being unfair at all, just saying how my artwork is being passed off as someone else's when I spent... That's crazy to steal their intellectual property like that and then tell them it's somebody else's. That's, oh my God. These sisters get worse. And I, I really thought they were just like some good old country girls. And you know, th that's just how they were. I didn't realize that they were trying to screw over everybody and their mother. Like it's ridiculous time doing it and I've now been blocked yet my design is still up on your website not really fair at all all I wanted was credit for it that's all as a result of this scandal Tammy's TikTok with over 1 million followers on which she had promoted her merch will be permanently banned however this still doesn't make it the most notorious controversy in the Slayton sisters history bringing us to the infamous really it, oh my god I forgot about the title I didn't even think this was gonna get worse like how could it but now Tammy's funeral and obviously no funeral has happened yet. Tammy's still kicking. She's still kicking and finger licking. Funeral <laughs> scam. It began when Tammy, who was the heavier of the two sisters, fell over in the bathroom before waking up the following day without the ability to breathe. I woke up and I couldn't breathe. Like, bad. Like, I really couldn't breathe. Yeah, you couldn't breathe anyway. Like, look at that. Your, like, neck is being choked out. Like, I don't think you were breathing laying down anyway. I don't think you just woke up and couldn't breathe. Like, I'm surprised you were breathing anyway. And after being rushed to hospital, it will be discovered that Tammy had contracted pneumonia. I went to the hospital okay. and the ambulance. Took x-rays and a couple hours went by and they told me I had pneumonia and I was going to have to stay in the hospital. Whilst in the hospital, Tammy's condition would worsen, leading her to pass out for- Bro, is her forehead really getting bigger in each photo? Like, I know that's something she couldn't control because that's just where the fat went. But I wonder- it's gonna take forever for her to lose that right because she's gonna lose weight and get skinnier but her forehead's still gonna be like blown up so how because you can't work out your friggin' forehead what the hell are you gonna do for three and a half weeks whilst on life support, during which Amy would begin the GoFundMe. Now, to Amy's credit, it probably was pretty scary having your overweight, unhealthy sister on life support for over three weeks. Agreed. However, to begin planning for the funeral before she had even died was almost comically pessimistic, which would become even funny when Amy stated that the money was to fund a Tammy's triple size extra large coffin. But Tammy. No, that's hilarious. But in all honesty, a damn coffin is going to be pretty wide. <laughs> like, they would have to do the same thing to me if I would have died at that size. So, I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing with them. Because I would have been there. I think my coffin would have took a little extra wood, too. You know what I'm saying? But, dude, she's not dead and you're asking for money. Like, at this point, three weeks in, I think they would have known that she's improving. Like, her health was improving. Probably. Because they would have some kind of like, you know, indicator that she's getting better or worse. So she's just trying to get more money. Like, I actually hate these sisters now. This is like their M.O. 
Me being so big and something does happen, her coffin is gonna cost them more because they have to triple the size of the coffin. Whilst mentioning that Tammy was on a medical card. How Bro, coffins are a ripoff anyway. Cause we like last year we buried my grandfather. I think that thing was like 10 grand or something. Like coffins are insane. However, the amount of money it provided would not be enough to cover the funeral. She is on a medical card. The medical cards will not cover all of the bills. So this GoFundMe account will be for Tammy funeral. If I mean, if you've got followers, you're getting views. You can generally attribute like the amount of views they're getting to three to four dollars per thousand view is what you're supposed to get. So if they are making half a million on a video, just sit there and figure that out for a second. What does that come out to? Let's see. So a million would be 3,000 to 4,000. So half of that, 1,500 to $2,000 per video. Why do you need to take their money? She dies. So please, please find it in your heart to donate. The GoFundMe itself, which would raise a total of $818, read, this fund is for if anything was to happen to her, will go to her funeral. If she makes it through this, the money will stay there or go to her hospital bills that insurance won't pay. I won't ask, but I don't know what else to do. Please, oh, please help. No. Like, if anything were to happen, you're like, we need this fund just in case. But that's crazy. You're, you're taking money from people who support you that probably are in a worse financial spot than you because you're already making money off disability off of the views and then people helping you like you're making friggin' money there's no need for this help us even if it's sense thank you and may god bless you now if amy had approached the situation from the angle of we're just doing this to cover the hospital bills and left it at that, that there probably worked. wouldn't have even been any backlash however since she had put so much weight on the possibility of death and people had donated assuming that she was going to die when she would return to the videos a few weeks later laughing joking bro she's sitting there happy as could be with a Reese cup in her back pocket like come on she just comes back smiling, not a care in the world. It don't even look like she just went through any kind of traumatic experience. That's why I'm saying she probably was getting freaking better and they're like, all right, you gotta stay out of the videos for a while because we just stole $800 from our fans and eating junk food as if nothing had ever happened. Obviously, the audience and those who had donated weren't all that happy, I judging from this. the 85% dislike ratio on the original We Need Your Help video. It also didn't help that in a different video, Amy would reiterate that the money wasn't going to be spent on anything besides the funeral. We won't be spending it on anything but the funeral. I just oh, wanted to no. clarify that. Or I'm going to take it up to the funeral home where it can build interest. Well, in all fairness, $800 is probably only getting them about a week or two worth of groceries. So yeah, they probably were putting down some food. So they needed extra food budgets, what this was. They didn't think she was gonna die. They were just friggin' hungry. I got it. I probably will take it to the funeral home and let it be Probably. Out so if something does happen, we have that as a backup plan. So when it was confirmed that there was no funeral, a new question had been created. Where oh. had the money gone? Amy would state yeah. that she had transferred the money to a well, I can solve this riddle. You don't have to ask anybody. This ain't friggin' Jeopardy here. It went to Walmart groceries. Like, that's where it went. Or to the Dollar Tree or something. You can get a hell of a lot of stuff at the Dollar Tree for $800. They might have ate for a month or two, actually. Screw that whole... Well, even at the Dollar Tree, probably about a month. Yeah. That's a lot of bugles. Yep mother to pay for Tammy's medical bills. The money that y'all donated for Tammy when she was in the hospital, I gave it to my mother who paid bills with oh, Tammy's no. bills. Regardless if that's what she used the money for or not, that's what I did with it. Yeah, that's gonna work. Just throw your mother under the bus. She don't even got a social media. They can't come for her. So now, first it was your, your friend that wanted the laptop, right? The MacBook Pro. And then it was your mom who stole the funeral funds. And then it was, I, whose fault was it that the dog ripped out the AC? Cause she's definitely deflecting. She's a master at that. With it. I gave it to my mother who paid bills. However, when her audience would ask her to prove it, she'd state that it was her mother's responsibility to provide the receipts. My mom is trying to find the receipts, but if she can't find them, that's on mom, not me. Then oh, in no. another video stating that the receipts had been thrown out completely. I know I've been wrong. I should not throw receipts away. Bro, you're lying through your teeth. Like this is just making me so mad. Because you know damn well that that money didn't go anywhere where it was supposed to or into some magic, like, 
future funeral fund or anything. This money was clearly blown somewhere else. And more than likely on groceries. So, like, ah, oh, you're pissing me off. But in my head, I wasn't thinking, well, these receipts might come to bite me in the ass. You know, I wasn't thinking that. I'm a, it was a simple mistake. However, if the GoFundMe had been done online, then surely she was using internet banking. Right. Why couldn't she provide a screenshot of the bank transfer to her mother? Medical bill receipts don't... Because there is no bank transfer to her mother. That never friggin' happened. Like, Amy seems to be the mastermind. Tammy's just the face of the show. Because everybody comes to watch Tammy F shit up. But <laughs> every, we're there to get ripped off by Amy, apparently. It seemed like something that you just throw away. It was suspicious that she was unable to provide any evidence for the money going towards the hospital stay, especially when her audience would notice that she also happened to buy a new laptop and a new camper right after the GoFundMe had concluded. Adelaide Bro, but she needed the camper because the dog destroyed the last one that she was in there in like a hot box. So she definitely needed the camper. That's what the fund should have said. This is our camping fund. We are very outdoorsy. That's what it should have said. Later date, Tammy would go on to state that Amy's GoFundMe made her angry as she felt as though she didn't need help. And when I found out Amy did the whole GoFundMe thing, no. believe me, I was mad. Because from one, I knew I wasn't going to die. And two... Oh no, Tam Tam smash! You know, you don't want that. She'll hurt your ass if you get in that little three feet circle and she can get a hold of you. That's what I used to tell people when they, they started to mess with me. I said, yeah, you come over here, I get a hold of you, it's over. But you can run and hide, I ain't going to catch your ass for sure. I didn't want help. I, not the person, want to ask for help. The most interesting part about the whole ordeal is that while most disgraced YouTubers simply fade into obscurity as the years go by, the Slayton sisters have managed to remain relevant after rolling their public image into a TLC show titled One Thing. Bro, I choked down so many of those protein shakes they're trying right there. And that looks like the caramel or maybe the, like, uh, coffee-flavored one. The coffee-flavored one's pretty good, but after surgery, you're not supposed to have caffeine. Because I don't, I forget what it does, but it does something to cause more bleeding or something like that. But yeah, I choked down so many of those, I absolutely hate them. Now I only have Fit Crunch protein bars after my workout thousand pound sisters on which amy has since lost over a hundred pounds has gotten married had a baby Hats and is off. looking healthy compared to her early days on youtube unfortunately the same can't be said for tammy whose continual weight gain underpins much of the show's entertainment factor the show just had its third season with well over one million viewers per bro imagine being that popular and like people watching you and you were scamming people for laptops scamming them for funeral funds whatever you're ripping off the people that support you. And I don't think anybody should watch your show at all from this point forward. But obviously, I'm going to keep watching it because I love a good train wreck. And yeah, it's, it's entertaining for sure. But this is just super scummy. I'm not happy to learn this. I like, I didn't realize there was so much going on from her, like attacking an autistic guy to friggin' stealing money for a laptop. Like she's done so much. It's so awful. But the funeral fund, that kind of takes the cake for me. No pun intended, because they definitely took the damn cake. But alright, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later. Peace.